Good evening, everyone. Uh, welcome back. As you know, gift number five was presented, and if you saw it, you noticed that in the middle of the presentation, we had silence. As we were talking about the spiritual armor, the reason why we have armor is because we are in a spiritual battle, and sometimes spiritual battle has technical hits. Nonetheless, like I said, we have a counterattack, and we're coming back to present gift number five, spiritual armor. That being said, let's turn into our scriptures. We're starting off in Ephesians chapter six. Look at starting at verse 10. If you're with me, give me an amen, all right? And this is what it says. It says, finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Now let's just look at that scripture. And I really want to look, it's its principalities and against powers. These are the things that we're wrestling against. The concepts, the precepts, how we're going to take things on. Verse 13 says, Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that you might be able to stand, withstand in the evil day. And having done all to stand, stand therefore having your loins girt about with truth. Now let's look at this. Let's, let's understand. Because many of us may not understand what a loins is. And back in the day, uh, gentlemen used to wear robes all the time, as you see. And the girding of the loins is how they would roll the, the, uh, the girding of the loins. No, follow me. Uh, uh, pulling up that robe was necessary so that they can get into battle without tripping. As you can see here, uh, they, they folded the robe up, tied it here and tied it there. So now they could go to battle. This is what he means by um, having your loins girt about with truth. Truth is good, gives us the opportunity not to trip. And having on the breastplate of righteousness. Now, this is really, really important. And as you can see, thinking about Romans and back in that day, that's what Paul was. He was a Roman. Uh, they put on these metal breastplates and it covered your stomach. And hopefully you had abs looking like that. Y'all pray for me. I'm trying to get some abs. However, these things were there of right doing righteousness that protects us just like this um this breastplate of metal will protect someone now today we if we get in a war we don't need a breastplate of of metal like this you know a bulletproof vest would do but in either one when you are in war and you get contact it's still going to hurt it's still going to be you know oh my goodness this this hit me hard and so when we have right doing as the scripture is saying right righteousness which is right doing it will protect us in this spiritual warfare verse 15 says and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace that's right we need to have shoes of peace on and i don't know about you as a parent you know uh, uh when you're walking in the living room or in the hallway and you didn't see that lego piece uh, peace may be the last thing on your mind. That's what we need in our spiritual warfare. We need peace, shoes of peace, to protect us as we go along the way. Because there might be spiritual minds or even spiritual toys on the floor as we go about our way. And when we have this kind of attack brought on us, we need to have peace so that when we respond, God still gets the victory. Verse 16 gets into it. It says, above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith you shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. Now, the shield is very important. We all have an idea what a shield is, thinking of Captain America, what have you. The bonus of the shield is it can be moved around, up, and down left and right to protect us because we don't know where the dots are coming from you know faith is that seriously important 
we can use our faith to God to protect us on when things are fired at, the, fired at us that we had no idea was coming. Do you use your faith that way? Are you able to take your faith and keep it with you so that when fire darts of life pop up, you can put your faith in front to protect you? This is one of the parts of the gifts that God is presenting to us. Verse 17, it says, And take the helmet of salvation, the word, I'm sorry, the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. Now, the helmet is the most important thing. Everybody needs a helmet. And the purpose of the helmet is to protect how you think. Not just protect how you think, to keep you alert. That's more important. Because if you get hit in the head, you don't know what could be going on. You could be knocked out and become uh, uh, available to the enemy. And we don't want that, especially not in our spiritual warfare. So we need that helmet on to, to protect us in this war. Tells us where to move our shield. And it also tells us when to grab the sword. That's right. The word of God. The offensive and can be a defensive uh, part of your armor. When we have the word of truth, the word of God, it destroys bad circumstances. That's right. When bad things come up, in our life and we're concerned and, and we're worried and we're like, oh no, this might happen or that might happen. We can always open the word of God to help us, to direct us in our life. Tell us where to go, to, ki to kill off bad spirits coming up, trying to d distract us from focusing on the footsteps of God. That is a very important piece of the armor. Look at verse 18. It says, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplications for all saints. Yes, the armor is there to protect us and to help us. But guess what? That armor can be used to help other people. It could give faith to other people. They could be like, man, how are you protecting yourself from the fiery darts of the devil? And you could show them that, that shield you got with all the scars, the impact points, your breastplate of right doing. You got hit, but because you stayed in, in the footprints of righteousness to, to execute right doing, you have scars on your, on your breastplate, but you show them that that still protects you. You know, it's one thing to be a soldier fresh. And I'm not a soldier, but I give honor to our soldiers that have never been in war. But when you have a soldier that comes back who's been on the battlefield, there is a different level of respect. You, you have more confidence in, in the parts that, that, that you need to put on to go into battle because they come back victorious. That's what God is calling us to be spiritually. That's a part of this gift of the armor that he's given us. So that as we enter in and still be in this war with sin, which will go on until he decides to come back, we can still get victory as we go out day by day, second by second. We still have protection from this armor. But now let's really look into what is the fight. We talked about the, 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 the tools of the armor or the armor itself, but what is the fight that we're going through? Turn with me to 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. That's right, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. And I'm starting at verse 15. See that none render evil for evil unto any man. Have mercy. Let, let's just pause right here. It says that we render, that we don't render evil for evil unto any man. Are you willing to do that? I mean, we have problems simply if someone cuts us off in the road. We're ready to go back at it and speed up by them. 
Y'all pray for me. Someone was on, was trailing me on the road, and, and, you know, I was getting frustrated. I was like, I'm about to slow down. But no, no, no. The Lord spoke to me and said, don't let the devil get the victory over here. So I simply just poured over and let the person speed by and pray that they don't get into an accident. Or more, and furthermore, what God put in my mind is, what if they're rushing to the hospital? What if they're trying to see their loved one? You see, this is the spiritual warfare that we're on. we got to stop thinking about self and look at how we can bless others. Let's continue reading. It says, but ever follow that which is good, both among yourselves and to all men. This thing is about everybody, not just your family, not just your cousins or the church folk but to your co-workers, to your boss, to, to, to everyone that you, that you even may not like. God is saying that we are in this warfare with them to hopefully help them get victory as well. It says, rejoice evermore. Pray without ceasing. You know, prayer is not just falling on your knees. Prayer is just talking to the Lord. Lord, I need some help today. I ain't sleep well, and they putting all this extra work on me, and, and I can't make it. Mm -mm. We, you cannot rely on Starbucks or, or, or your other coffee, your morning go-getters, you know what I mean? You got to have your morning uh, coffee, your morning egg and cheese sandwich, or whatever it is you do in the morning. Let, let's, let's not put so much trust in there. Let's put trust in communing with the Lord, because this is the kind of battle that we go through. And mine is, you know, I love my cashews. Before I eat, I, I need a bowl of cashews. That just gets me right in the morning. But whatever it is, we need to, hey, you know what, Lord? I need your strength today. Because I hear, I hear the warfare going, and I need some serious help. Verse 18 says, In everything, give thanks. For this is the will of God, in Christ Jesus concerning you. We got to give thanks to everything. And you see why I, call, why I point this out as the warfare. Many times Satan can get to us by thinking that things are supposed to be given to us. So we don't have room to give thanks. And we become selfish. And then, then, then we become reliant upon things instead of relying upon God. Verse 19 says, quench, quench not the spirit, despise not prophesying, prove all things, that's why we need the word, hold fast that which is good. And here's number 22, this is a strong text, and I'm going to read it very slowly because this describes the kind of warfare that we're in. It says, abstain from all appearance of evil. Now, we know we're supposed to abstain from sin and not do evil things. But here, the scripture is taking it a bit deeper. It's saying don't even deal with the appearance of evil. My soul. I don't know about y'all, but I need some more prayer. I need y'all to pray for me. Because that's talking about we shouldn't have any appearance in our dress, in our vocabulary, in our demeanor. In, 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 our, in our decorations in our home, uh, um, the way we do our hair, uh, the way we, everything that we do, we should stay from the appearance of evil. Now here's the thing, that is most importantly will benefit us if we can learn how to, to say, you know what, let me stay away from the appearance of evil. That gives you a better opportunity not to enter into sin. Because if we stay away from the appearance, we won't get close to the sin. I don't know about you, but I have a problem. Sometimes, uh, it, it ain't evil. Yeah, it might look bad, but, but I'm good. I can still go forward. And next thing you know, now I'm trying to fight off sin. That's like if you were trying to get off of alcohol, but said, you know what? I'm going to the liquor store to get some orange juice. And now you, you're not sinning. You're not going to go in there. But you're looking at all, oh, and then probably the, your favorite drink might be on sale. That's the kind of warfare that we're in. That 
is where we have to be willing to accept God's gift of armor, his spiritual armor, so that we can be consistent in this kind of fight. And when you get in any type of fight, any type of conflict, here's the most important thing you need. Carriage. That's right. If you, many of us don't have carriage in our spiritual warfare. We look and say, man, that ain't me. I can't do it. Uh-uh. Nope, I ain't bought that. That's too far from me. Y'all holy and righteous people go ahead, but, but I can't do that. And here, a part of this gift of armor, the reason why God is giving us the armor, he's giving you the armor, is to encourage you. You know, a lot of times we always talk about faith in God. But you ever think about that God has faith in you? That's right, God has faith in you. Right, what you man, you, you, you talking crazy. Read about the story of Job. The only reason Job went through the things he went through is because God had faith that Job would stay with him. Satan said, the only reason Job worships you is because you got this protective hedge around him. God said, oh, you think so? I got faith in Job. No, nah, I'll take the hedge off and show you how much that Job is trusting in me, that Job is following in my footsteps. Can we have the heart of Job? I know none of us want to go through the hardship of Job. No one's saying that. But are we willing to live a life where God can execute faith in us and that we can show others that God is willing, is, is should, and I'm getting my words all mixed up, should have faith from us. That he loves us that much that he has faith in us. So let me encourage you. Let me show you this point of encouragement. Looking at uh, 2 Timothy chapter 4. 2 Timothy chapter 4, starting at verse 1, and it says, I charge thee therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead at the appearing and his judgment. Preach the word. Be instant, in season and out of season. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lusts shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. Now let's stop right there. None of us want to be in that group of people. And not to be in that group of people when we have on the armor, when we are fighting the fight, you know, when, when reproof has come along, we won't be, oh, what you judging me? No, 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 no. That's not that. What we're saying is you might have a missing part of your armor. Let's get you repaired. Pray. I'm praying with you. I'm praying for you because we're in spiritual warfare. There might be things that are going on you may not even realize. And if someone says, hey, my brother, my sister, I've noticed this. It's not a judgment thing. It's a thing of, I want you to have a good fight, just like all of us. I want you to be closer to God, just like I want to be closer to God. We don't want to be like verse 3, not enduring sound doctrine. Hey, if God's word has said, this is something we should stay away from, even though we may like it a lot, have faith. Say, God, you need to send some more angels, Holy Spirit. You need to come in here over time because there's no way I'm going to get rid of this myself. This is what it's calling us. Look at verse 4. And it says, and they shall turn away their ears from the truth. We don't want to do that. And shall be turned unto fables. But watch thou in all things. Endure affliction." Do the work of an evangelist. Make full proof of thy ministry. For I am now ready to be offered. And the time of my departure is at hand. Here Paul is talking to Timothy and say, you know, look, I'm about to get caught up. I'm about to be passed away. The work is on you. 
And let me tell you, ladies and gentlemen, you do not need to have the title of pastor, elder, bishop, doctor, evangelist, anything. The fact that you have taken the gift of Jesus Christ, you have accepted his blood, you are in the warfare. You are to be used by the Holy Spirit to share the love of Jesus Christ to others, to the people you get in contact with. Because guess what? Pastors, bishops, elders, deacons, uh, whomever, may not, do not have the sensitivity, the in-depthness of people that you may have. We're all, you can't leave the spiritual fight up to the leaders of the church. No, no. They got to fight their own fight too. We are called upon, each and every one of us, each and every one of us, we are called upon to evangelize. What do I mean by evangelize? Share the truth with your friends. You should have a life of standing from evil, going, going through what, we going, what we've already read about the spiritual armor, where your friends come to you like, hold up. You've been going through some stuff, but you still seem happy. H how is that possible? And you can testify of spiritual armor that God has given you. You can testify by how you've made decisions to stay away from the appearance of evil. That's how we minister. You don't need a spiritual degree. When we are fighting the fight, we can share our victory with others. Paul ends in verse 7. He says, I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Henceforth, there is laid up for me a crown of right doing, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day, and not to me only, but to all them also that love his appearing. That's right. Paul's not in heaven, y'all. He says, look, when I die, I know that when he comes and I'm taken out of that grave, that, that Christ, it's not that he's saved for his right doing, no, because he accepted the gifts of God. By him accepting the gifts, it put him in a fight. So today, as we all are fighting because we have accepted the way of Jesus Christ, I encourage you, my brothers and sisters, to take the gift of spiritual Listen, my friends, the gift is a gift that you want to take. It's a gift of the heart. It is a gift that every person needs. It protects you. Every part of the uniform has a certain purpose. There are offensive parts of it. There are defensive parts of it. In fact, there's parts of it that keep you from getting tripped up. Nobody wants to leave home without being fully armored. And you don't even take it. I don't know about you guys, but I've been enjoying my meals throughout the week. And uh, Darrell has for us our food gift number five that helped keep us alive. What do you got for us today? Today I have for you something that's fun and easy to make. I love easy recipes and fast recipes. I'm retired, but I don't like to spend a lot of time in the kitchen. So this is an easy one. This is a tofu burger made with tofu into a burger. And the ingredients are tofu, nutritional yeast, sweet germ, and seasonings, which you'll get the recipe. But the add-ins are also important. So I like to add in ca shredded carrots or black beans or lentils, anything that you want to add in to make this your burger. And so I like to also highlight some nutrients in there. Not everybody's familiar with nutritional yeast. Nutritional yeast is grown on molasses, but specifically developed for vegans who don't eat meat and you need to get your vitamin B12 to get to nourish your brain. 
so the the b12 it nourish it regulates the nervous system it protects the colon protect us against cancer from colon cancer breast cancer stomach cancer it also helps to maintain our digestive system and it gives if you eat nine two tablespoons of it per day it gives you nine grams of protein which is equal to about a cup of whole milk you don't need don't need whole milk. It's better to get your proteins through plants. You know that. So the nutritional yeast, that's one. The wheat germ, you know, the wheat germ is the one that they, that they take out out of the, the flour. It, when they, for the whole grain, they take out the white flour, they take out the bran and then the germ, and then they sell it the wheat germ. Use that two tablespoons a day is very, very healthy for you. It helps to repair your tissues gives you good bone health, and it also helps with your immune system. Now, if you make this recipe, get, if you have kids in the house, get them to help you to form it, form them into the burgers, and you can make them ahead and freeze them. So when you're ready for them, you just pop them out of the freezer, put them in a pan with a little bit of oil or stick them in your oven. It's a fun recipe, easy to make. All the recipes you've had so far, are very easy and quick and fun. And I hope you have fun making them because I had fun making them myself and eating them. I'm really looking forward to having this burger. Let's see how we get it in. So we're gonna start over here with our tofu burger. This is gonna be, this is one pound of tofu, kind of firm tofu mashed, a half a cup of oats, half a cup of wheat germ, two tablespoons of nutritional yeast, two tablespoons of onion powder, a teaspoon of basil, and a teaspoon of oregano, and a little bit of salt. So in here is the tofu, and I'm, I'm using a pastry cutter, because I like, I don't want my burger, my tofu to be mushy. Um, I need some texture in this. I'm gonna mash it. Then I'm gonna add in the old fashioned oats the wheat germ, and the nutritional yeast, and the other seasonings, okay? Then I'm gonna continue mashing them. Now at this stage, you can choose to put in, to, to be creative with your recipe. You can put some shredded carrots in here. You could put some nuts or some seeds, such as sunflower seeds or some um, pepitas. I keep calling them pepitas, but they're pumpkin seeds. So this, you just keep mashing it, and then you would put this down for for half an hour to let it to let the moisture absorb in and form it. So I'm going to show you what it looks like after it's been sitting for 30 minutes. This is the texture you want. I'm going to turn on my pot because I'm going to be browning them here. So this is the texture, okay? And I have this little gadget that I got some time ago. I used to make my burgers. You can use the top of a peanut butter jar. If you don't have this, you can get this at Bed Bath on Beyond or maybe on Amazon. So it's been sitting. It's all the moisture has been absorbed. And so I'm going to put them in here and form my patties, just press down. And you can do it with your hand. If you don't have this gadget, if you don't have a peanut butter top. Okay, I like the form. I'll show you by hand. You determine how thick or thin you want your burger. So you just form it. If you don't have the gadget, no worry. You can still enjoy your burger. Okay, so I'm gonna brown that up. I'm gonna wash my hands. And I'm gonna brown this up on both sides. I have a little, little bit of coconut oil in here. You can choose to put this in the oven, just spray it with some Pam or some other similar thing. 
spray and just let it sit in your oven and brown up a little bit. It doesn't have to be cooked. It doesn't have, <coughs> it doesn't have to cook a long time because it's not meat. It's tofu. And as you know, tofu can be eaten raw. We had a burger that was already in the pan from earlier. While the others are cooking, we're going to make our burger. So once again, if you don't have this gadget, or if you don't have the cover, cover like this, peanut butter top, you can put the saran wrap inside of it and hold the saran wrap down here. And when you press your burger in, you can just drop it in here, okay? If you don't have that, then you can use your hand just like I showed you to. So, I'm gonna plate our burger. I have one that's already ready. So one here. Now you'll always hear me talk about adding in. I like to add in to my recipe because for the new to up the nutritional value. So on here, I sprinkle some nuts for the texture. I like texture also, so I like variety. I like texture and I like to add nutrition. So I sprinkle some nuts on here, some seeds rather. And that's my burger. I'm also going to add some avocados, which I pre-sliced. So, let's put some avocado on there. So that is my burger. That's my plating for you. So that's the tofu burger. And I have some, my mayonnaise is vegan. I love this one. Not, I don't, I'm, I'm, I'm not promoting it, but this is the company and it's a vegan dressing or spread. It's very delicious. I also may decide which I'm going to do. I'll put a slice of vegan cheese. It's a vegan cheddar cheese. So you can be creative with your burger and make it the way you want it. So I'm making it the way I want it. Put some cheese on top of that. And that's my burger. So I have a sesame seed bun, the tofu burger, some avocado, some vegan cheese, some lettuce, lots of lettuce, and tomatoes, and I have some peppers and some sliced apples. So you see I have a variety of things you have color, very presentable, you have color, and you have texture. So this is my presentation today, Cooking with Durrell. Please remember to like and subscribe in my video, and tell your friends, and try it. It's very delicious to do. Thank you once again for stopping by my channel. I'm Cooking with Durrell by Eden Soap Ministries.